Now, I'd like to briefly touch upon the assertions made by China and the Republic of Korea, respectively concerning Japan's territorial integrity. Particularly, I'd like to point out that the critical elements of these assertions are without any factual grounding. It was only in the 1970s that China started to make their unfounded assertions concerning its territorial sovereignty over the Senkaku Islands. China started its campaign just after reports came out of the existence of possible oil deposits in the East China Sea in the vicinity of the islands. Until then, China had never claimed territorial sovereignty over the Senkaku Islands for the more than 70 years since Japan incorporated the islands into its territory. China now claims that the Senkaku Islands were historically part of China, ceded to Japan in 1895 by virtue of the Shimonoseki Treaty that ended the Sino-Japanese War. According to China's view, these islands were later returned to China as a result of the Kailo Declaration in 1943. This assertion is totally groundless. In the first place, neither the Shimonoseki Treaty nor the Cairo Declaration deals with the Senkaku Islands. Moreover, the determination of territories and boundaries after a war can only be determined by international agreements. The San Francisco Peace Treaty is such an international agreement, and political documents, including the Cairo Declaration, are not. Under the San Francisco Peace Treaty, the Senkaku Islands were confirmed as a part of Japan. That is why we see no grounds whatsoever in China's assertions that the territorial title to the islands is at issue. With regard to Takeshima, I'd like to stress the following historical facts. In 1952, the Republic of Korea unilaterally drew the so-called Singman Re line in the high seas in contravention of international law, placing Takeshima between the line and the Korean Peninsula. Since then, the Republic of Korea has been illegally occupying Takeshima. In order to resolve this dispute in a peaceful manner, Japan has repeatedly proposed to the Republic of Korea that the case be referred to the International Court of Justice. However, the Republic of Korea has continued to refuse referral of this case to the ICJ. I would also like to take this opportunity to draw your attention to recent developments in relation to our territorial integrity. In recent years, we have seen attempts to change unilaterally the status quo in the region by force or coercion and intimidation in the East China Sea and the South China Sea. As a result, tension in the Asia Pacific is rising. The region, including areas surrounding Japan, is being disturbed by frequent incidents and behavior that undermines regional peace and stability based on the rule of law. As Prime Minister Abe stated in his keynote speech at the end of May during the Shangri-La Dialogue in Singapore, the following principles should apply to any territorial claims. States shall make and clarify their claims based on international law. States shall not use force or coercion 
in trying to drive their claims, and states shall seek to settle disputes by peaceful means. It is absolutely necessary that the importance of the rule of law as reflected in these three principles is firmly understood and appreciated by all members of the international community. Since the end of World War II, Japan has consistently walked the path of peace. Japan has always abided by international law. Japan has championed freedom, democracy, and basic human rights, thereby contributing to the peace and prosperity of Asia and the rest of the world. As close neighbors, Japan, China, and the Republic of Korea face common challenges. And we have lent a helping hand to each other in times of difficulty. Let me stress again that Japan will continue to pursue this path of peace. This is what Prime Minister Abe himself has clearly spelled out over and over again since his cabinet was sworn in in December 2012. This path of peace is the very foundation of Japan's policy of proactive contribution to peace based on the principle of international cooperation. Japan intends to continue working closely with our regional partners and neighbors in order to maintain and strengthen a regional order based on international law. We must ensure that this region, which has been growing in a dynamic way, continues to enjoy peace and stability as well as prosperity. This is the path forward that Japan will continue to walk. As the first Japanese cabinet minister in charge of territorial integrity, I intend to continue to use every opportunity to explain Japan's position concerning our territorial integrity to the rest of the world as well as to the people of Japan. I will continue to communicate and explain our position, the historical facts and the relevant international law on which it is based in a calm and logical manner. Improved communication from the government of Japan to the Japanese people as well as to the rest of the world on this subject is crucial. It promotes and consolidates an international environment where issues and the challenges are resolved peacefully on the basis of international law. I'd like to continue to seek your support and understanding of Japan's efforts to this end. Thank you very much for your attention.